Hi everyone, do you remember this amazing app called GigSpace? Right, I've already reviewed it and it's one of my top rated augmented reality apps. Uh, and uh, when I reviewed it, I also mentioned that it would be amazing if there was an option for users to create their own jigs and share them with others. Well, now it's possible thanks to Jig Workshop. Now, before you jump to the app, uh, to Jig Workshop, it's a separate app that you need to download separately, it's free. Uh, let's take a look at Jigspace just for a moment so we can see what it is if you haven't seen this app before. So it's an educational app that covers different types of topics, uh, which you can learn using uh, different 3D models and text, and uh, you can interact with the presentation. Again, it's a really entertaining, uh, fun, and uh, exciting augmented reality app that take good use uh, of uh, augmented reality in order to create immersive and fun uh, learning experiences. But as I mentioned, I mean, Jigspace can need to create so many learning experiences. Just imagine how many things there are there, right? Do you want to just start creating a Wikipedia by yourself? Absolutely not. This is why you need a community. You need people to contribute uh, to this uh, uh, amazing uh, application in order for people to learn about many other topics, not just the limited amount uh, that uh, is available right now uh, in a Jigspace app that um, the company Jigspace have created uh, has created uh, by itself. All right, now we are moving to Jig Workshop. Now I spent some time with it, although I still want to, uh, you know, uh, test it more thoroughly uh, and try to create really cool uh, jigs with it. I created something kind of funny, but I think it explains uh, the overall idea, so you can understand what it's all about. Uh, so let's take a look. Now I skipped the tutorial, but the, the app starts with a really nice uh, tutorial that explains to you the basics of how you can create your own jig. Now, uh, here I create my own uh, jig, a new jig, and I start from scratch uh, because I wanted to get something on my own, right? It's the whole idea here. Uh, again, you can, the idea is to create something that uh, you, know, you can teach about things uh, in the world and you have this big library as you can see with in different categories like biology uh, as you can see inventions chemistry and you can just uh, easily select uh, the 3d model uh, that you want to use in your presentation it doesn't mean that for example if i choose a frog i need to explain about the frog right i can just combine it and create my own scene with the frog in it and then explain something about it what essentially you are doing is creating this uh augmented reality um, 3D presentation uh, which users can interact with. Uh, there are different types of options. This is kind of a, you know, a Photoshop style user interface where you can uh, rotate, move, scale down, up, duplicate, uh, and do other kind of uh, uh, 3D uh, object manipulation stuff uh, in the 3D environment. The thing is that when you manipulate uh, things in 3D environments, usually it's not that easy. I mean, especially for casual users, not talking about 3D modelers or people who are into this type of uh, uh, 3D art. So for me, it was very, I, I know about 3D modeling. I tried it before, but again, I think for casual users, it's still very simple and easy to use. Of course, like, you know, other apps, you have this learning curve, but this learning curve is not really, uh, you know, something that will prevent people from creating really fun stuff. Actually, I created, you can see here, I just uh, created this frog, I duplicated it, and then I applied many other things in order to create a unique uh, presentation of my own, kind of something funny, but it worked really well. And it was really fast. It was really fast. I actually created my own jig, like I think like three or four stages, and with tags and uh, some effects, and uh, it, it took me, I think like um, only a few minutes, that's all. Now the stages of the presentation uh, is, is seen at the top, as you can see, one, two, and uh, I think you better like uh, you know PowerPoint um, page, you know that you create, and uh, as you can see, when I when I um, create a, a different, uh, I would call it a different uh, manipulation of the 3D object, uh, it kind of create a twinning between it, so it's like kind of a transition between the two. Um, uh, parts of the presentation, it works really well, it looks really nice. As you can see, there are many uh, 
the 3D object there. Um, I don't know from which library they are taking it, but uh, you know, you need pretty, you know, pretty much a lot of objects, uh, 3D objects, in order to allow users to create really many different things. Because if not, you are just staying at the same place, right? You need to create 3D objects or buy 3D objects and inject them into the uh, library in order for people to use it. But maybe for educational purposes, it's, you know, they can just uh, connect uh, via an API and just pull some 3D objects from uh, uh, Sketchfab you know, and other libraries. Some of them are actually open and then you, know, you can use them uh, in the app. I don't know how they're going to do this. I didn't dive deep into it, but I'm going to check it out uh, later. Yeah, I'm just creating something funny. I just put the frog, uh, rotate it a bit <laughs> and put it on the bike. Uh, yeah, I know. Don't laugh. I mean, I just wanted to create something. So the frog meeting and then uh, uh, there's this frog jumping on the bike and then you're going to see like uh, something cool like a dinosaur coming in and then he, this dinosaur wants to ride on the bike and then it's going to jump on the bike and the frog is going to push it out. The thing is that, you know, this is not something that has any educational value. It's just for entertaining purposes because I just wanted to create something quick and see how fast are we able to create things. It was actually really, really easy. Now, of course, you can write things. You can give it a title, just running a long description that explains about this specific part of the presentation. Uh, uh, you can change colors, as you can see. Uh, you can delete it if you want, and then you can save it for later use. And once you are satisfied with what you are doing, you can just uh, scan the floor and then place the presentation, the augmented reality 3D presentation on the floor and, and see how it looks, test it out. You can also rotate it and scale it. This is something that was available, is available uh, for Giga um, uh, presentation by default. As you can see the twinning, look at this, animated. This looks really nice. It's actually a feature that I wanted to have uh, in Torch app because I think, you know, just to make it things more, you know, look better. Uh, when you create something, you know, that uh, moves from one thing to the other, create a transition, just something that makes the presentation look more you know, nicer. Of course, you can continue, depends on your presentation, educational presentation that you want to use. Uh, you can add more slides. Yeah, it's better to call it something slides. Uh, and then, you know, write things and explain about things. Uh, again, I just, you know, as you can see, there are many, many uh, 3D objects here. Uh, and uh, there's also an option to search at the top so you can easily find this. And I think this library will continue to grow. So it's good to have a search option so you can quickly find the ones that you are, you want to integrate uh, into your presentation. Uh, this is the little dinosaur, little, I can enlarge it, that I was talking about. Um, and uh, I can actually, uh, you know, I needed to move it. So we just, you see those uh, arrows, you just um, tap and, and and drag on those arrows in order to uh, either enlarge them or remove them uh, or rotate them uh, uh, relative to a specific axis. And because if not, it's going to be hard for you to, for example, if I tell you just to move it back, how are you going to do this, right? You need this arrow in order to uh, push only on the red arrow that moves the 3D object on the Z axis. And this is something very in common uh, in 3D modeling software, but the thing is, that here you don't have different types of windows for different types of perspectives. So you really need those and it works really well and it's very simple to use. Now you probably ask yourself, how, how can I share my uh, creation, right? So uh, this will appear once you save it and share it, it will appear in your in your My Jigs. Um, just let me show you the screenshot for just a second. So as you can see, this is My Jigs. This is in Jigspace uh, app, not in the workshop app. All right, so once you do this, you get a link. And if your app is not installed, it's going to show you on the website, it's going to show you um, a screen that asks you to install the app in order to use it. So if you share a presentation with someone and that person doesn't have uh, Jigspace installed, it will show you a link where they, it will show the user a link uh, where they can uh, you know, um, install the app. And then once they run the app, it will automatically uh, launch the experience itself. And of course, you can access all the available uh, jigs that you have done uh, in this uh, tab, specific tab, my, uh, uh, my jigs. So uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about is, uh, you know, why you actually need this one. Maybe you have other type of presentations, right? Because, you know, it's very simple to see that when you use 3D, the user, especially using augmented reality, 
uh, it allows users uh, to actually observe things you know closely and uh, you know uh, just move around a certain object and view it from different angles uh, and of course it's more immersive and fun for users like the same thing like uh, seeing something in the image and then uh, seeing uh, something like in real life right kind of now the one thing that actually I really wanted to have and maybe it's available I didn't find it is the option to use WebRR in order to you know not just be limited uh, to Gigspace app uh, but being able to actually uh, maybe export the presentation and just view it through the browser right we still we already have those type of technologies that enables us to just uh, through the browser just tap and then see the presentation uh, you know whenever we want to use it so but just through a use uh, a web uh, user interface I'm not talking about having uh, even need to launch the app at all just seeing it in the browser and then tap on it and you know you can just place it and experience it in augmented reality so what happened right now from what I was able to experience is when you press this link for example you show something on your website right and you want to explain it in augmented reality a person who clicks this link uh, will uh, be asked either to install Gigspace or it will trigger the Gigspace and we show the experience through this app only through this app uh, another option which is of course better if the person doesn't have the app you still want to be able to create some kind of a presentation right and then uh, uh, something on your website that you want to explain thing about and you want to use this authoring tool Gigspace in order to create it but you don't want other people to be tied to a specific app you just want them to be able to experience it using current web AR technologies another thing is uh, that uh, when you create things with this uh, uh, app you need to also consider the fact that if you put too many uh, 3d models it's gonna slow down it's gonna be, I kind of you have gonna the user is gonna have some maybe problems running it in terms of frame rates because there are many uh, polygons in the screen at the same time depends on the uh, device is being used didn't see any benchmarking thing that you know something like an alert if you put uh, many object uh, but this is something that I'm gonna check out when I'm gonna you know, try this app uh, more in depth and try to uh, benchmark it and see how far I can go with it. So this is a quick look uh, of a Jig Workshop. Uh, you can use it to share your knowledge in augmented reality. And this is exactly the missing link that was missing in this uh, previous app. And I'm really, really happy that the developer have decided to develop this. And now it's about the community creating things, uh, how you encourage them and you know, um, we'll see. And why I'm saying that, that I think that WebAR has the potential right now to encourage people to use it. But, you know, the thing is that the user need to have the app. And it was like something like USDZ that can write straight from the Safari browser or other technology that writes straight from uh, native browsers. It will be more accessible. Uh, you won't need to bother users for, you know, seeing the educational experience or anything you want to present and talk about. Um, and also want to see something like you know uh, adding voice I didn't find anything here maybe I missed it I need to check again uh, you know I think it would be more accessible and people will be more be encouraged to use it uh, on their websites for example I want to create a presentation that explains something a concept about augmented reality something all right uh, related to maybe uh, uh, depth cues all right I can use this one but I want this to be very accessible right I want to put it uh, with a maybe like an, an embedded thing or just a link and then uh, you know make people click on it and uh, they can actually uh, play the augmented reality experience straight from the browser uh, using web AR that's why I think it can be really cool and something that again I didn't find maybe the creator will correct me maybe there is anything like this I didn't find anything like this so this is it this is jig workshop great app I highly recommend checking this out if you haven't already. Uh, and this is it. I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.